Today we're going to get the Saddleman seat on and then do the Cox crash protection all around as well as the step plate. We got the uh, engine crash cage up there. Shout out Brian for hooking me up with his old sub cage for the back. And then we'll get the step plate on. And then we're going to replace this slippery ugly stock seat with the nice Saddleman. Uh, so we'll probably start with that. So when you get your uh, Saddleman seat, this bracket is flipped the other way. So these two bolts, I put a little blue Loctite on and just snug them down. Not too hard because if you watch the Cruzy Originals video where they install a Saddleman seat, he does the blue Loctite on these because this is the bracket that goes to the back of the Defender there and there's really no reason to be taking this off again. So he was saying they're brass fittings into plastic housing or something like that, but snug them down, you'll feel them bottom out and then you get this little ring here. This will go right over that. Then you'll just take the bolt or if you're doing the security key, that'll bolt through there as well. This is the uh, Saddleman security key. It's got a bracket, a bolt, and the special tool. I'm gonna put blue Loctite on this at a later date, but I really don't need the uh, seat coming undone, so that's why I'm gonna put Loctite on it, and then I'm gonna use an actual wrench to, to torque that down, tighten it all the way so that has no chance of coming loose, but essentially you'll see this bracket just goes over the um, seat bracket, put the bolt through, use the tool, you're good to go. So I'm setting up for the step plate right here. It pretty much mounts flush to the back of the fender like that. This plate right here on the back is uh, two and a quarter and my stripes from inside to inside are, are three inches. So if you split the difference, it's three eighths from the inside of this line to here on each side. If you really want to get technical with it, this is how I marked it out. And then I just took one of these super small harbor freight clamps and it clamps to in between the two holes on the step plate so i just held it in place marked out where those holes would be and then i center punched this one so i'm going to drill this hole kind of bolt it in place temporarily and then start this one so it's all squared up <laughs> So we kind of got the step plate mounted. Everything's squared up on the fender, which is good. See how that turned out and get the grip tape on there. Um, but the one thing that is kind of an issue is the hardware. I don't know if you can see under here. They supply flat washers and lock washers too. And with the bolt size that they gave, I mean, I'm not even out of the nuts yet. So I think I'm gonna try and find some of these hex head bolts that are a little longer and actually stick through the nuts so I can put the flat washers and the lock washers that they provided on as well. I feel like these are a little short. Even with like that metal piece, if it compresses, like you're still not gonna have enough space to put the correct hardware, or at least all the hardware in there. So uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at the step plate that um, this hardware might be a little short, unless I did something completely wrong, but I don't, I don't think so. I mean, this is the other hardware they provide two lock washers two flat washers that still have to go on there and you don't have any room at this point so so for the step plate the uh, hardware that Cox provides is short so this is what I'm going with instead it's just a stainless steel M10 bolt flat washer that'll go through the step plate and then underneath another flat washer and then a lock nut and then just a dab of blue Loctite too, make sure everything's all secure. Just had to drill out the holes just a little bit more. This way, I actually have thread coming out of the nut just a little bit, as opposed to nothing coming out at all. So that's what we're gonna do instead. I have a feeling that the subcage hardware is also gonna be off 
a little short, so I might have to work some magic on that and see what uh, we come up with there as well. But. saw the step plate earlier you probably saw me mention um, using different hardware for the step plate because the cox supplied hardware um, wasn't long enough what I'm thinking now is that it is the correct hardware if you remove some things you can see that bracket in the back and that's kind of around the fender and supports the turn signals when they're in there and I think if you remove that and you just bolt directly to the rear fender the cox hardware will fit um, for the step plate and it probably will fit for the sub cage as well. But because I'm trying to keep this thing street legal and keep the uh, turn signals and and all that stuff on there, that hardware is not going to work for me. So keep that in mind. I mean, if you're not going to run any of that stuff and you want to take this bracket out underneath here, um, you should be okay with the stock hardware. I think the only two things you do need are longer bolts for the front where the pegs are. But other than that, the stock hardware should work for back here and here as long as you take that bracket out. sub cage to make the stock turn signals work um, I'm reusing the OEM bolts that used to be up here because I think they're a pretty good length and then these are 2 inch 5 16 by 18 washers on the inside there just for a little bit of uh, spacing make sure the threads are right and then for the big bolts in the pegs they were just the uh, two and a half inch length ones and then I cut off about four threads so it doesn't stick out too far underneath the fender and I have to worry about like uh, you know rubbing I probably could go a couple more threads off that should be okay it is actually a little bit longer than I was hoping I think once everything got tightened down it pushed out a little farther you need two and a half inch for the pegs and then these guys are two inch washer on the inside and then OEM bolts here that used to be there and I'm gonna put Loctite on these and crank them down but this is only if you want to keep stock turn signals and stuff on the Roadster didn't use this bracket you could use the Cox hardware I still think you need longer bolts up front on the pegs the only thing I changed on this sub kit I drill a hole to get the wires through and then I think these two this one on this side and the other side I drilled out or I dremeled out just to kind of keep the bolts as straight as possible as they come through there. Um, so there's a little bit of modification to uh, get this thing to work, which is kind of expected. There's always going to be different fitment issues.
the sub cage is finally on. We're just missing pucks. I have to order some more. Like I said, two and a half inch, five sixteenths, 18 bolts up there. Back here is kind of peculiar. So these second ones back there are a two inch of the 5 16th 18. And then this one right here is the OEM bolt that usually goes right here. I guess it, it didn't need as long on this side, but I ended up using another 5 16th two inch on this side as well. So that's what the fitment looks like. I mean, this thing right now feels pretty solid. like. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I use washers on the inside for both of those. Washers there, washers there. Blue Loctite, of course, there. And then for those, lock washers and nuts on each side. Also blue Loctite on there. So we got the cage on finally. Um, out of all cages, this surprisingly was one of the easier ones to put on. There wasn't a lot of like messing around to try and get stuff to fit correctly. My piece of advice for it is to um, start these bolts on each side so the cage can kind of rotate like this. And once those are in, kind of swing it up, line it up with the frame here. Um, I had to take the horn off because I really couldn't get to those bolts under there very well with a ratchet. So you can just take that off the bracket. And then what I ended up doing was wrapping a zip tie around the frame in this part of the cage to pull it this way because I was off a little bit with these holes. It was just needed to come towards me a little bit more. So I zip tied it to get it to line up. And then I started with the left motor mount bolt on this side right here. And I was able to hand thread the, the whole thing, you know, with my fingers. And then I ended up pushing the cage or grabbing the cage like this and kind of what that does is it pushes it the opposite way. And if you hold it, hold it like this, you're able to finger thread the right bolt in. So I just kind of kept going back and forth. I release, kind of have the zip tie pulling it tight. That made this one line up super easy. Finger thread it all the way, grab the cage, and then finger thread the rest of the other one, the one on the right there, and then you can just ratchet them down, torque them down to what they need to be. And you shouldn't really have to fight it. This was actually surprisingly easy. You just have to, if you have two people, uh, you can actually just have the other person pull the cage whichever direction it needs to be. So they can push it towards you to get the one in and then push it the opposite way or pull it the opposite way so you can finger thread the other bolt in and then I just torque those and then those up here so one other thing to note is the order of things here uh, you have your horn bracket then the stabilizer link and then the cage and then the frame so the cage goes right up to the frame and then all the other stuff underneath it this was a surprisingly easy install for this cage you really should not have to fight these bolts like it shouldn't be a struggle to to ratchet those down it should be able to go finger tight all the way and then obviously i put blue loctite on those and 
and these down here. But yeah, that, that cage was super easy to install and I was kind of, I was happy with that. And then, you know, just put the horn back on when you're done. Uh, positive on the left, ground on the, on the right if you're facing the bike. And, you know, this is kind of what we're, we're working with right now. Got the cage on. Seat, sub cage, step plate. Pretty much the last thing is just to get rid of these ugly OEM bars and put the RC on, new grips, and uh, put the Brembo Master, and this thing's pretty much done. So that's going to be the end of this episode for the crash protection on the Roadster. Hottest stash in the carpet. Yeah, we trapping out apartments. I ain't done where you start shit. To be honest, get the flame in my heart, gotta spark it. I didn't know they